This is a 2022 Kia Carnival, a mini ve uh, hold on. I'm being told that this is a multi-purpose vehicle and not a minivan. Even though it has minivan proportions and sliding doors, but don't be foolish, this is not a minivan. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I want to tell you more about this minivan. That's not a minivan. What is a 2022 Kia Carnival? Well, the government classifies it as a two-wheel drive minivan, but Kia is adamant that this new car, which is the first to wear the company's new logo, follows the design philosophy and takes many cues from the Telluride and other successful SUV models. And as such, the label of minivan doesn't fit. That's a shame because this car could really make minivans cool again, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Carnival is sold in four trims, LX, EX, SX, and SX Prestige. And Kia gave me the top two trims to try, the SX and SX Prestige. The SX seats eight and the Prestige seats seven. But the Prestige also has these crazy cool reclining second row seats and a bunch of other neat tricks. The Kia Carnival is powered by a 3.5 liter V6 engine producing a peak output of 290 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. The power then goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission and onto the front wheels. The base price for the 2022 Kia Carnival LX is $33,275. An EX costs $38,775. An SX goes for $42,275. And the top-of-the-line SX Prestige will set you back $47,275. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. Well, here it is, the brand new 2022 Kia Carnival. This is the very first Kia to have the new Kia badge, which was unveiled just a little while ago. It's edgy, minimalist, you know, contemporary, those types of things. But it fits with the car. The styling of the car works with the new badge. You've got a very three-dimensional pattern grille with uh, these chrome accents to it. And then you've got this nice lower valence here, down here, stuff like that, and the chrome accents to it and stuff. And, you know, generally speaking, it looks just like you'd expect a multi-purpose vehicle to look, but in that context, it looks really cool. Kia did some really clever things. Um, one that I particularly like, if you look at this bar right here, just above the headlights, follow that along, there's a contour line that runs the entire length all the way to the tail lights. Now, they call it a contour line, but it's not really a contour line. It's a clever way to uh, make use of the space for the sliding door to go in and to and out of that makes a styling decision that makes the whole piece cohesive. Um, the other part is for the C-pillar, they added this like kind of bold chrome accent to it to give it just a little bit, uh, a little bit more color, a little bit more pizzazz, a little bit more um, something to look at. Um, generally speaking, I think that they did a really good job with the shape. I don't think it really looks SUV-like. I think it looks like a cool minivan. And it is also a cool minivan with black 19-inch wheels on it and a whole crap load of features. Can I say crap load? Is that okay? Um, the key fob is right here, and it has lots of buttons on it just all over the place and they do a lot of interesting things for example if i hit and hold down the unlock button both sliding doors and the tailgate open up or i can start the car just have to hit lock and then the button's right there and also with the key fob in my hand I can open the sliding doors without doing a thing. Mm -hmm. 
or I can just keep using the key fob and open and close them as well. And of course, I can also close. Overall, I think Kia made a lot of good and interesting decisions with this car. And I think that it looks cool. It's not something I would say just looks good. It doesn't have that innate appeal to just stare at it. But you can look at it and be proud of what it can do and how it looks as it does it. Let's look inside. It's a nice, sharp looking two-tone interior and we are looking at the top trim SX Prestige model. And that means that we have the 12.3 inch instrument cluster screen and 12.3 inch center console screen. They did a nice job with buttons and um, also little pieces, accent pieces on the instrument cluster and on the, on the dash. I like this metal they incorporated. I think they did a good job with the uh, controls, climate control, cup holders and the buttons down here. As you can see, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. You also have seat memory, which is nice. Up front, you have wireless phone charging down there. That works really well. Also several USB ports. And let's go ahead and get in and start the car. Of course, it's screens here, but it's laid out well. They did a good job to have nice, clean, easy to read things. And of course, it's configurable. And here is the screen lit up. You have lots of things to choose from here. Lots of choices here and um, everywhere. And they've got some fun little bits to talk about. They've got passenger view, which is a camera pointed at the second and third rows. And um, you can see that the two captain chairs in the second row are skewed. I'm gonna show you more of that in just a moment. They also have this thing called passenger talk where you can talk and it goes through speakers um, to the second and third rows. That's interesting. And you have all kinds of other things you can adjust here as well. And uh, this was something I first saw on the Hyundai Elantra. Sounds of nature. How about that? Generally speaking, it's a really comfortable, smart place to be. And if you look up, you've got a uh, moonroof right here. And on the second row, you've got a second moonroof. But uh, there's so much more to show you. Let's go ahead and show it to you. Moving to the second row, I wanted to show you the different options you had because you can move the seat fore and aft and side to side, it'll slide in and out like that. And you can see on the tracks, it'll actually slide quite a bit fore and aft. And I have the seat on the other side. That's how far back it can go. So this is the far forward position. That's far back position. I mean, that's what, 16 inches? So you have a lot of adjustability there. But that is not the cool part. These seats are also powered and you have a lot of adjustments right there and then these two buttons in here is what can be used to put on something called VIP lounge mode. Press and hold this button and all of a sudden it moves back into this like relaxing well laid back stage. You can see the seat bottom lifting up and the seat back going back but that's not even the most of the best part. You can also have more leg support but let's say you're a little taller very very cool so you can you can set up the second row to look like that which is very clever and i can tell you firsthand it's also quite comfortable but there's more still so first of all you can open and close the sliding door with that button right there you have inverted charger and standard uh, 12 volt charger right there cup holders you also have USB ports on either side of the front seats and on the sliding door you have shades and heated and cooled seats 
for the second row. And of course, you've got nice cup holders. You have armrests on both sides. So you can properly, properly lounge in this thing. And of course you have two screens for a rear seat entertainment and a, a plethora of options there. So this SX Prestige minivan offers tons of options and really comfortable features for the first and second row, which is super cool. And I haven't even shown you the third row yet. Okay, I put the second row seats back into their forward position just to give you a sense of how much space you have back here, which is a lot of it. And you've also got this nice big floor mat to play with, but if you remove that, now you can see the fold flat seats. And they are pretty darn easy to move around. Did that with one hand and then and now you have much deeper, although much shallower, space. And for the third row, well, behind the third row, you've got more 12 volt power and another inverter under there. And there is your third row with three seat belts. And in addition to that, you also have um, shades and USB ports. But yeah, overall, duly impressed with the interior of this SX Prestige. Oh, and I didn't even show you. There's the second row moonroof right there. What? Look at that. A second Kia Carnival just showed up. This one is ceramic silver, and it is a Kia Carnival SX, which is the second highest trim level, not the SX Prestige, which is over there, and the highest trim level. The big difference is in the middle row, but real quick, this one also has, instead of just a big instrument cluster screen, it has a smaller screen in between two actual gauges, which I have to say in a lot of ways I actually prefer. But it's also generally high end with lots of features, lots of button buttons, lots of options everywhere. Things to control, things to do. You do not have the two moon roofs, but you also do not have the VIP lounge seats like you do in the SX Prestige. Instead, you've got a three row bench right there. Now, this has the same third row, and right now it's also folded down. But this is the three row setup, but you do have still a lot of adjustments. You can see the rails in the floor, so you have a lot of possibilities to move these rows around and the middle seat does fold down and become a table and more cup holders for the other two passengers here if you have the space for it and you also you have the usb ports and you do also have options for the screens and things like that but the big difference here is that this middle row is removable and let me show you how that's done now to do that, there is a lever down here, way down under here. So under this cushion here, there's a lever and the seat has to be in the back position, but I'll show you what it looks like with the seats out now. And there are the seats folded and out of the car. And look at all that space you have now. Now that is some leg room for the third row right there. Now, it's easy enough to fold the third row flat. Let me show you that real quick. So now all of a sudden look at that cavernous space you have to fit all kinds of things if you're interested in things more than people. Well, you've got space for it. Hi everybody, and before we even get started, I want to let you guys know that I used to use a minivan. It was my haul vehicle when I was go-kart racing around the Midwest, and I loved it because it was big enough that I could carry my go-kart, the kart stand, tools, gas tank, all my racing stuff, yet it was just a normal car on the road. I didn't have to worry about pulling a trailer, gas mileage was the same, all of that. So. 
I really appreciate the space efficiency that minivans offer. Now, what I had was a 2003 Ford Aerostar. And to me, it looked cool. It was like a big door wedge with wheels. And that, that shape was really kind of just iconic and well-known and just in a weird, like, weird way, kind of like spacey and futuristic. And I thought it fit the uh, job of go-kart transporter really well. Now, since the Aerostar, minivans have grown, become even more useful, and extremely family-friendly, family-oriented machines. That didn't make them any prettier. <laughs> the problem is that minivans became so family-focused that they didn't cater enough to the adults that actually owned them. So much so that minivans became a metaphor for losing all individuality. You just became the parents of your kids. What's cool about this carnival is, is that there's actually some features for the adults in here. Um, enough so that it has the potential to make minivans a little bit cool again. Ironically enough though, Kia refuses to call it a minivan. <laughs> Regardless of what Kia calls it, there's a lot of new things to talk about here. First of all, it's built on a brand new platform called N3 that uh, Kia also uses on their all new K5 sedan. And just like the K5 replacing the Optima, this Carnival does replace the Sedona, which was Kia's minivan. The Sedona still exists for the 2021 model year, but will not for 2022, which is when this car um, officially starts. And pushing this new N3 platform-based car around is a new 3.5 liter V6 that makes 290 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Now, those numbers sound extremely similar to the Kia Telluride, but it's actually different. That uses a 3.8 liter V6 and makes 291 horsepower and the same 262 pound-feet of torque, but the torque peak as it is at a slightly different RPM. So. I have a feeling that the three and a half liter is going to eventually replace the 3.8 liter, and you'll see that in the Kia Telluride uh, soon enough. And uh, as it goes on, it'll probably develop more horsepower over time too. More importantly, it's a good motor. It runs smoothly, quietly, has nice linear power buildup, and a good amount of power when you're really on it. It pairs well with an eight-speed automatic transmission that shifts quickly and cleanly, and uh, generally no fuss. And I appreciate the fact that it's a naturally aspirated V6. Now, power goes to the front wheels. There's no option for all-wheel drive here, and that is across the line up from the base trim to this top-of-the-line trim. But I do think there is an opportunity here. For people like me that live in the snow belt and do occasionally rely on all-wheel drive, to get you out of certain circumstances, like when you need to get up a snowy hill, then um, all-wheel drive would really help. Now, my guess is that Kia didn't want to offer all-wheel drive in this because they didn't want a drive shaft running between the front and rear axle, which would have forced raising the floor of this thing and reduce the ultimate uh, passenger and cargo capacity that you have. And, you know, they're boasting about the Carnival being best in class there. But the opportunity is, why not provide a hybrid or plug-in hybrid all-wheel drive system and give us a drive shaft free all-wheel drive system with a battery pack and electric motor now i don't know about packing efficiency and stuff like that if you have room to make it a plug-in hybrid and get 15 20 miles of electric driving um, only and then still have the gasoline motor great but even just a hybrid where you have some horsepower and some torque on the rear axle and some all-wheel drive traction would be super sweet and that would increase your fuel economy and kind of give you that you know percentage of your lineup that's electrified and all this kind of stuff so that would be a really potential and i think that would help increase sales um, in the northern regions places like michigan but truthfully for the vast majority of people the vast majority of the time it's going to be just fine as front wheel drive and uh, it'll go unnoticed. Furthermore, this N3 platform feels solid. There's no weird quivers or shivers. Um, all the doors close with a nice kathunk or a rolling shunk. <laughs> You've got um, 
pretty darn decent road, uh, road noise isolation, wind noise isolation, and a very comfortable cabin. From a handling point of view, you know, it's totally competent. The brakes feel solid under your feet, and uh, steering is reasonably precise and all that. It's a minivan with a big long wheelbase, so you get tons and tons of understeer early and often, and you've got a lot of body roll and pitch and dive and things like that, but okay, come on. In, in a vehicle like this, it certainly isn't outside of expectations. If you want, you can get to the limit pretty easily in this car and feel comfortable about uh, controlling the limit just you know you're not gonna be going very fast <laughs> and you're gonna be moving around a fair a lot fair amount like I am right now this is not a car to drive on Canyon roads unless you want to go really slowly and carry a bunch of people and stuff on those Canyon roads then you have a lot of benefits Put all of that together and that means that this Kia could actually be a pretty darn epic road trip car. And I mean that not just for families, but for adults too. So let's uh, take it on the road for a little bit and see how it feels. All right, and here we are on the highway cruising with traffic and as expected, the car is quite, quite comfortable. It's actually a really warm day and I have the cooled seats on just a little bit. And I am, my hands are on the wheel, of course, but I have what is called a highway driving assist on, which is adaptive cruise control, but also uh, steering help as well to keep you centered in the lane, etc., etc. There's a ton of assistance, driver assistance stuff in this car. And uh, a lot of it is the usual kind of nanny stuff. But one thing you do get is um, high beam assist, which is something that I always appreciate. Automatic high beams, those types of things, are just a convenience um, in, a in addition to a safety feature. And speaking of features, it's worth pointing out there, there's several more that I'm sure I've missed. Uh, you know, surround view cameras to make it real easy to uh, know where the corners of this car are when you're going forward or backwards. Uh, whenever you're changing lanes, you get an extra view, a uh, low view camera that pops up on the instrument cluster screen. And uh, there's just a whole just list of features that this thing has to just make driving just a little bit easier, a little bit less cumbersome. And when I say driving, I mean like the day-to-day -day commuting, not driving for pleasure driving because obviously that's not the category that this car plays in so in short this car offers a lot and it offers a lot of comfort it offers a lot of features and i think it offers a lot of style too and of course it also offers a lot of space and that can be for people or stuff so they're absolutely right in calling it a multi-purpose vehicle but all minivans are multi-purpose vehicles, right? I mean, this can tow 3,500 pounds. That's awesome. You know, that's a pretty decent sized boat. That's a small camper. That's a, you know, a good utility trailer. Um, so you have a lot of options of things you can pull that way. But Honda Odyssey and Toyota Sienna can also uh, haul 3,500 pounds. And yeah, you have a lot of space in this car as well. But, you know, so do the others. Maybe not quite as much, but you know, relatively speaking, it's the same. What makes the Kia stand out isn't that it covers more purposes than the other cars out there, but it does it in a cooler way. You know, Kia put more emphasis on style in this car. They put more work into um, making the components of a minivan work as part of the design as opposed to sticking out like a sore thumb. And critically, Kia, at least in this SX Prestige package, included some really nice features that just adults could enjoy. Those VIP lounge seats in the second row with the entertainment and their own moonroof and all that kind of stuff, that's proper comfort. And that is where you can take advantage of all that space and just really let people properly lounge out. This thing would be brilliant for uh, a day at the beach with just, you know, a couple of couples. Um, this thing would be great for tailgating. You know, you'd have plenty of space to have the grill out back, to have seats and stuff like that and have people relax here. Hell, you could probably watch the game in the middle row if you wanted to. 
this car provides a way for adults to use it in addition for in addition to families and it allows people to still have that identity as a human being not just as a parent and what I think is so cool about this Kia is not that it's not a minivan is that it is a minivan but it's using a minivan in ways that everyone can get advantages from it I think this minivan is cool and I think minivans are cool and I think minivans are a little bit cooler because of this Kia Carnival I'm Robin Warner thank you for watching